Hello friends, here I am Talha Kaleem again in Matt and Cat Tips. Friends, according to the commitment I made in the previous video, I'm going to make you learn how to take inputs from a GUI and how to use those inputs in any Simulink model or in any system. But why I'm taking Simulink part here? The reason is quite simple. Simulink is very extensively used nowadays for solving complex systems as it's very easy to get solutions of mathematical systems in Simulink. Uh, so uh, you can see my previous video showing up on the top left corner of the screen. Uh, so you should check this out before going further into it. So let's get started. Okay. I have already opened MATLAB for the purpose. This is the exact same GUI workspace on which we worked in the previous video. This is the graphical user interface that we developed. And this is the Simulink model. Uh, if you could remember, in the previous video, we used a dummy system. Actually, system was not present at the back end in the previous video. And what we did, we just entered some random responses and use those for plotting purposes but here in this case i'm not using a dummy system but there is a real system that i will use to get responses x1 and x2 uh, and you do not need to worry about this system because this is a simple mechanical system and called a spring mass jumper system with masses constants k's and c so this is enough Since we need to add input spaces for that purpose we can just change the size of the background space uh, what I do prefer here is that we should have separate panels for inputs and outputs for that purpose let's just place a panel here and adjust its size Let's take these things on to that panel and let's just name the panel. This is the property inspector from here. Let's change its color. This is good. Then the font size. Okay, let's make it 16 and the title yes it should not be called panel but it should be output yes this is good okay i have already placed an input panel now to create input spaces we will use edit text boxes and to name those inputs i will use static text uh, the reason is that that static text uh, it cannot be changed by users input and edit text it can be changed by users input let's place an edit text box and for naming purposes place a static text uh, we can just align these and can just adjust this person in the simulink model there are total of six parameters that i would like the user to input for you to easily identify those i have changed their foreground color to green and background color to black now let's just change some of the parameters of edit text boxes let's make the font size to 12 color is fine and change the string okay uh, let's assume that the initial value that will be shown here is zero okay this is good and let's just change its parameters font size let's make it 12 and for ground color is that is good and let's just call it the first input which is k1 
okay nice now just adjust the size and align it good okay I have already placed the remaining input slots since we want the output plot to appear after we hit this plot button so most of our coding will be done behind this plot button let's get into its callback function moreover I highly recommend that you should watch first the previous video to have a better understanding you can see that there is already an existing code here if you remember this code was placed in the previous video in the previous video uh, we used we used fixed dummy responses for plotting purposes but in the present case the output responses will come directly from simulink model so we need to change our coding a little bit i have already written the small modifications that will be needed so copying these four lines and replacing these with these three lines okay the simulink model that we have here is named project vibrations uh, now if we want to run the simulink model from the GUI workspace then we will have to use the command sim so what this command does sim command runs the project vibrations model and stores its outputs into simout variable so what simout variable contains if you have any basic understanding of simulink then you can uh, very well understand what this block does this block reads to workspace so what it does it outputs the values of x1 into the workspace so without any of these blocks we cannot output any of these x1 x2 and x3 responses uh, but that but there is one response that is outputted by default when using sim command and that response is simulation time okay so what does simote contains in the present case simote contains x1 x2 x3 and t out if we want to extract values of these variables from simote we just need a dot in between the remaining code will be the same as we used in the previous video so up till now we have been successful in running the simulink model with default inputs and default outputs let's have a test mm, by selecting x1 plot and plotting so yes it's working and x2 and plotting yes it's good so we should now use the values from the input slots and update those values into the simulink model uh, in the present case the coding will not be done behind this plot button but we will do coding in the edit text functions for that purpose let's get into its callback function Okay, the code that will be used here is already written by me. Let's copy this and paste it here. By the way, I have already pasted this code here. Okay, so what this code is doing, uh, it's getting the value that is uh, written there in the text box which is a string value and assigning it to the str well variable and what this line is doing it is converting that string value into double value and what this statement is doing it is setting parameter for gain which is present in project vibrations equal to str well here we have done one mistake since we are inside input callback function for k1 but here we have written k3 so let's just make it k1 similar code will be used inside all the remaining input callback functions except one difference and what is that difference let's see 
if we see this simulink diagram three inputs are given to gain blocks and three inputs to constant block in case of k1 we are giving input to a gain block so let's see we have written here gain but if this input is given to a constant block instead of gain we will write value here okay now it's time to test let's see if the thing works or not so this is the main gui and we have written code for k1 uh, let's make its value as 45 and enter let's see if we see the simulink model it's updated you can see 45 there okay i have already written code behind all the remaining input functions so now it's time for the final test let's have it okay let's just type some random values maybe like four seven it's three it's one and two and it's the plot button for x1 okay so this is the x1 plot and for x2 okay this is good now let's just change it to let's say 60 let's see what happens yes it's reflecting the change okay now let's just make it 50 oh yes things are changing this is good and let's just make it okay. nice so this is all for today and i hope that you enjoyed this video in the next video i'm going to come up with something very new exciting and interesting uh, the next tip can be about any cat software or it can be about matlab so let's wait for it thank you